Well, experts link climate change to many changes here on Earth, like exploding wildfires and major hurricanes and earthquakes. But global warming is also making an impact on your dinner plate. Sujatha Jagadar is a policy expert for food and culture programs at NRDC, the Natural Resources Defense Council. She joins me now from Washington to discuss it all. Sujatha, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. You bet. So how exactly are rising global temperatures affecting the world's food supply? Well, uh, when you have hotter temperatures, the what you can grow in certain places changes, and there are crops that are carefully calibrated to uh, to existing temperatures and soil conditions and moisture temperatures. And so when you change that, uh, it could have a big impact on what you can grow. For example, coffee is a sensitive plant uh, and relocating those plants to more um, uh, to more humid and moist areas in the face of climate change would be expensive and change the livelihoods of many. So, so this change in climate is altering also food production, but what do we know about altering the climate in general? Can you explain that? Sure. So food production is very linked to climate change, and that's something that most people don't know about. When people think about the sources of climate change, they think about smokestacks and, and car pollution. But it turns out that there are high volumes of fossil fuels associated with producing the food that we eat. So, uh, and actually, people are shocked to hear that uh, livestock production, so producing the cows and the, the sheep that we eat, uh, produces about 15 percent of the world's uh, global warming emissions, and that's equal to the entire transportation sector's emissions. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge contribution. So how uh, do you and change that, Sujatha, if you've got that 15 percentage, which is pretty significant? Yeah, so there are a few food items that have an outsized impact on emissions associated with the diet. Uh, for example, beef uh, is uh, makes up 34 percent, so more than a third of all the emissions associated with the U.S. diet and more than any other single food. Uh, and most other foods combined. Mm -hmm. So if people want to make an impact, uh, reducing the amount of beef that you eat uh, would have a big one. And I'm looking at this list that we have on our screen here, butter, chicken, turkey, can you explain? Yeah, so we're talking about primarily animal products that are contributing to global warming from the U.S. diet. Uh, and that's because it takes a lot of feed to, uh, to, to grow these animals. And that feed is often and largely produced with uh, huge quantities of pesticides and fertilizers. And what most people don't know is that fossil fuels are used to produce these chemicals. So when you apply them to fields, uh, you're fueling uh, global warming. Uh, and then cows uh, and ruminants, like, uh, like sheep as well, have a digestive system that produces methane uh, when they digest. And methane is much more powerful, a greenhouse gas, than even carbon dioxide. And that also contributes to climate change. Now, did I see that right? I noticed asparagus on that list. How, how is that possible? Yeah, so if you grew asparagus in your backyard, then that wouldn't be a big problem for climate change. But unlike most other produce in the United States, uh, eaten in the United States, the majority of asparagus is actually flown in from South America, mm. and so that is the the high uh, cl climate impact reflects the uh, air freight uh, emissions that mm. are associated with asparagus. You know, we see, as you mentioned, overwhelmingly, it's a lot of meat products here. But if you don't want to give up meat right now, how can you still make a difference? You absolutely do not need to become a vegetarian to fight global warming with your fork. Uh, <laughs> what you can do is just uh, cut out a little bit of meat. So, for example. If you, if uh, uh, all Americans cut out the equivalent of one burger a week, just mm -hmm. one burger a week, that would be like taking 10 million cars off the road. Mm -hmm. uh, that would have an enormous impact. So we're not talking about totally revolutionizing the way we eat uh, and giving up animal products altogether. But if you can cut a little bit, uh, that's great uh, for the planet, and it's also great for your health. Uh, lots of health associations have linked red meat to a whole variety of health impacts uh, like heart disease, diabetes, cancer, uh, and so you'll be doing yourself and the planet a favor. I love how you say this, fighting climate change with a fork. Sajatha Jagadar, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.